So apparently I'm actually not funny at all and my students were a little bit upset with me. Um, apparently I wasn't listening to them, something like that. I wasn't really paying attention. So let's get some practice questions solved. I was going to one-shot this whole thing, but there's a bajillion questions, so I'll see how I can get on with doing that in one video. If I may, I may have to make it into parts. I don't know. Let's see. All right, in question one, you've got the current as a function of time. Now, first things first, you need to know whether you need to take the derivative or the antiderivative based on the question. So the first thing is I will think about the formula relating current, time, and what is the question asking for? Charge. So charge, time, you will check your formula sheet. You will see you have the formula called quit. Q equals IT. I don't know why I did the T first. Q equals IT. I can rearrange it to find the current. I equals Q over T. So in this case, one of them is derivative. One of them is antiderivative. Take a guess now which one you think it is. Okay, I'm guessing you have guessed. Okay, I'm guessing you have guessed. Okay, whatever. What I've decided here is, look, which one looks like a derivative? Well, this looks a bit like a derivative. You put the, this, like a little d here, that looks a bit like a derivative. So this is fine. Over here, that does not look like a derivative, so this is probably going to be my antiderivative. So it'll be something like that. So that's something to think about, okay? If, if the formula looks like it, this can work for any formula, by the way. You can do i equals v over r. You can do it for anything at all. If there's a division, you will do derivative. That's how I like to remember it. Divide, derive. Divide, derive. Okay, this question is asking for q. q equals it. I will not do the derivative. I will do the antiderivative. And of course, I'm sure you remember how to do that. You will raise the power, and then you will divide by the power. So for example, in this one, this will now become 3t cubed over 3 minus 2t squared over 2. This is how you do the antiderivative. So of course, the 3s will cancel, and the 2s will cancel. That just simply leaves me with t to the power of 3 minus t to the power of 2. All I do now is I substitute the value in. It's between 0 and 5, so I'm going to put the 5 in here. So what's this? t, or t, this is supposed to be 5 cubed minus 5 squared. Checking your answer in your calculator, you'll get about 100. So your answer will be c in this case. Okay, very nice. So then after that, we will skip these two questions because they're not going to be required in your end of term exam. So I will not spend time on them. And this one here, Ohm's law, it's just basically Ohm's law, right? So that's V equals IR. So Ohm's law states that the potential difference is equal to, the potential difference is equal to the current multiplied by the resistance. That's the formula. The current flowing through times the resistance. This is good. Let's just double check. The current divided by, well, that's wrong. The resistance divided by, wrong. And the current times the cross-sectional area, that is not the relationship we're looking for. The best relationship is A. So it's just by using that formula. OK, so over here, we have a voltage. We have a voltage. We have an area. And we have a current. We need the resistance. Well, I don't really care about the area. Is there, but it's just an extra piece of information that is not required. Why is it not required? I just need to know V over R, right? So I can just do 2 divided by 3.2 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, well, that does not look good at all. Anyway, putting this into your calculator, hopefully you'll get the correct answer. And the correct answer should be, in this case, D. 630. There we go. Easy. Let's check this one. So two wires. 1 and 2, same material, same resistance, the length is different, I need a ratio of the cross-sectional area. So the thing is about this, this is not really a physics question, it's just a maths question, to be honest. What is it saying? It's saying R1 is equal to R2. Fine. It is telling me that rho L over A is equal to uh, rho, well, it says 2L, doesn't it? Length of wire 2 is twice that, so it's rho 2L over A. Fine. And this will be A1, and this will be A2. I am going to cancel my row, which is the resistivity. No need. I have L over A1 is equal to 2L over A2. So I want to get a ratio of the A's. So I want to put the A's on one side and then the L's on the other side. So what I can do is I'll multiply both sides by A, divide both sides by L. Basically, I'm just going to swap these two around. That leaves me with this A2 over A1 
equals 2L over L. Now, not really there yet because this is A2 over A1. This wants A1 over A2. So easy. I'll flip both sides. I will flip both sides of this equation to get the same thing. So A1, there's a little bit of math here, over A2. A1, A2 is L over 2L. Look at that. So there's an imaginary 1 over here, of course. The L's will just cancel. The ratio between the A's is 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is a half. That leaves me with C. There we go. So which one has the largest current flowing through it? So in this case, well, there's a few things. You need to either understand the idea of um, the resistivity, the, the formula, and the voltage. Or if you don't know that, if you can't think about it, all you do then is solve it. Put some fake numbers in, and then you can go ahead and, and solve this. So I can clearly see by looking at these questions, this is 10 volts, 1 and 1. OK, this is normal. Uh, this is a small wire and a, a, a diameter, but you have a small voltage. This is 20 volts, so I've got a funny feeling this is going to be the biggest one. But I can check. We can quickly check. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just do my general formula for resistance first. And then I can do I is V over R. So let's see. Uh, rho L over A. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set everything to 1 except the thing that I am changing. Except the different values. So I know this is, you know, this is, this is not supposed to be 1, but I'm going to make it 1. I know this is a diameter, and I'm supposed to do pi R squared, but I'm not really. I'm just comparing the individual values. So you can actually get away with doing what I'm just about to do. I'm going to do 1 times the length of 1, and I'm going to divide that by the diameter, with pi R squared, Diameter or double the R, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to write 1 squared. So I'm going to do that, okay? Pi is not important. I don't care about that. So I'm going to do that, and that's just going to give me 1, isn't it? So I have 1 ohm in this fake example for part A I'm talking about. This is this one here. I'm running out of space already. So what I'm going to do now is I'll just do I equals V over R. V over this imaginary resistance. So 10 over 1 will just be 10 amps. So I would write maybe 10 amps over here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to check my next one. Let's check this one over here. I'm going to just make a little line there. So I'm going to do this. RL over A. So, uh, not rho L over A. 1 times 0 0.5 is my length divided by the area, which is a diameter, 0 0.5. I'll keep the diameter, and I'm going to square it. So the only thing I've done now is that everything here was 1, 1. I kept it 1 and 1. Now I have 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. I've changed it to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. I'm squaring it because, again, pi r squared. Um, I'm aware of the diameter. Putting that into your calculator, you'll get 2. My imaginary resistor here has 2 amps, not 2 amps, 2 ohms. So I equals V over R. We will do V, two, where are we? 5 divided by 2. 5 over 2 is 2.5 amps. I have 2.5 amps. This is a long-winded way to do this, by the way. Like I said to you, I just... Once you get the idea of the relationship, you'll, you'll be able to tell that this is probably going to be uh, a good one, be mainly because of the voltage. But let's check. Let's do part C. Um, we're going to do the same thing over here. Well, what I'm going to do is 1, I'll close the line there, 1 multiplied by, in this case now we have 2, divided by 2 squared. And I'm going to do that. If I do that, I will get 0 0.5. 0 0.5. No problem. I is V over R. I will do 20. Why 20? Because it's 20 over my 0 0.5, and that will give me 40. See that? I knew it. It would be huge. This is 40 amps, imaginary 40 amps. And this one, same thing. You'll realize when you follow the same route, you will get 4 over here when you do this one, and then you'll do 5 over 4, and you'll get 1.25. Um, so that means I'm just not going to go do the whole thing. This is definitely the best one here, okay, 40. Moving on to this one, now you need to find the resistivity of the metal. So you have the diameter, now I cannot use the diameter, I have to use the formula. And you can do shift solve, and of course I've made a video on that already, on how to use it. Um, that will save you time in your exam. R equals rho L over area. Area, so I'll write pi R squared. So what you're going to do is you can just put your R in here. We have the R. Just substitute the values. 15 milli. Milli means times 10 to the minus 3. And I'm going to do that equals to the resistivity is what I need. So there's my lazy P. That's the resistivity, the rho. Multiplied by the L. L is 1.3. 1.3. And I'm going to divide all of that by the pi. 
r squared, half of the diameter, half of 1.7, so 1.7 divided by 2, of course, is 0 0.85. I did not use my calculator. Um, okay, 0 0.85 squared. Solving this, you will get your answer. And if I do solve this, what do I get? I will get an answer, obviously. And that answer that I will get should be 2.6. There we go. Very nice. Okay. Question 10. Now, let's look at this one here. 20 centimeter long. You have the diameter again. We don't use the diameter because pi r squared. And if you don't know anything about diameters, I probably should have clarified this earlier. This is the diameter of a circle. The radius is what we're looking for. And that's half of the circle. This is the radius. So we're using a half. So the radius is a half of the diameter. So in case you didn't know that. We're trying to find the current this time. Okay, so in this case, two steps. Step one, you will find the resistance first. So you'll do R equals rho L over A. You solve that, you have your 1.7 multiplied by 0 0.20, don't lose centimeters, 0 0.20, must be in meters, multiplied by 0 0.5 times 10 to the minus 3. I'll just write it in, why not? I will write it in here, 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8, multiply that by, what have I done? Uh, multiply that by L, 0 0.20, and divide that all by the pi R squared. R is half of the diameter, so 0 0.5 times 10, times 10 to the minus, this is millimeters, minus 3. I'll put that in a little bracket here, and I'm going to square that. Step two, you will just find the current. It's asking for the current, so I'll do I equals V over that R that I just solved. V divided by this answer. 3 divided by whatever your answer was. Answer. If you do that correctly into your calculator, hopefully you will get 693 amps. Very nice. All right, moving on. What's this? A copper wire, you have a diameter over here, and you have a current, and you need to find the, the power dissipated. Okay, so similar idea as before. First thing we're going to do is find the resistance. We'll find the resistance by doing rho L over A. Again, no problem. We have the 1.7. That stays the same. Copper has the same resistivity. You do not need to memorize it. It will be given to you. And then you have the length. Do we have a length? Yes, we have 2. Divided by pi times 1 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. So we'll put that into my calculator, and you'll get the resistance. Once you've done that, you can just find the power. P equals I squared R. We could have used PIV, but there's no V. So I'm going to use P equals I squared R. And when I do this, I am going to get the answer of 1.56 watts. All right, so I've cancelled the rest of these questions, I think. Yes, I have. And I have been interrupted, so I'm going to stop the video now. Thank you.